the 2021 Olympians this evening. Right next to me, I have Miss Annie Laser, who won the women's 200 meter breaststroke this evening. I have next to her, Ryan Murphy, who captured the 200 meter backstroke title this evening. And at the end of the table, all the way to my left, is Michael Andrew, who won the men's 200 IM uh, final this evening. So we will start with raised hands and we will get you a mic. We've got Peggy right here in the front. Hi, Peggy Shim with TeamUSA.org. Annie, congratulations. Um, question for you. So, um, read a little bit of your background. In 2017, you decided to come back. Um, I was wondering what drove you back to swimming, what attracted you back, and um, did you reach out? How did it work out that you reached out to Lily, that whole situation? Yeah, so um, I decided to come back because um, I was I was missing the sport a little bit, and I knew that um, if I was missing it at all, that I didn't want to look five or ten years down the road and regret um, not coming back in a time that I could. You know, I can work at a desk all my life, but I can't swim all my life. So um, from that point on, it was a pretty easy decision. Um, the road to be here was far from easy. But um, I had amazing, you know, support staff and uh, teammates and family that all just, you know, undoubtedly just decided to take this journey with me. And um, I just tried out Indiana for a week and knew it would be a great fit for me. Um, and I did actually have to, you know, Ray wanted to get the okay with Lily before I came and trained with her. Um, so I think for her to accept a competitor into her training environment kind of speaks to the world about the kind of competitor that she is. Hi, Annie. Two questions for you. One, what was the desk job? Um, I actually worked at um, Cal Berkeley in the athletic department. Um, I was an operations intern with uh, men's swimming and beach volleyball. Okay. Um, and then what emotions did you feel? What went through your head when you turned around and realized that you had done it? Um, I kind of knew deep down. I hit the 150 wall and I was like, oh, I'm kind of a little bit ahead. I'm usually not ahead at the 150. <laughs> um, so I kind of knew um, that I'd be there, but just to hit the wall and look up and see Lily right there as well, um, it was just like practice every day. So um, it was a great feeling to have it be here on you know one of the biggest stages. But um, in reality, I just wanted to make it just feel exactly like practice, so yeah. Hi, Annie, Nathan Fenno with the LA Times. Can you take us through how that relationship with Lily has developed over the last few months? Yeah, um, I think it's, developed more in the last couple months than it has you know even the last few years to be quite honest with you um, she's been there for me in ways that I can't even begin to describe um, you know words kind of fall short to be quite honest with you um, but you know what like she is my family outside my family the people that I train with every day are my family and um, the last few months for me have been far from easy but um, she has kind of dragged me through the mud and pushed me every day and distracted me and before we got up for the tuna brush she told me she loved me and let let's just do this, and that was really all I needed to hear. For Annie, David Reeder from Swimming World, tell me about that reaction. I, you got very demonstrative, very emotional. Tell me, take me through the moments with Lily. I, we, we, we did it. You're sitting on the lane line, getting out, hugging Ray, hugging your teammates. Tell me, hey, take me through what that was like. Um, I'm still kind of processing it, to be honest. I just know that this was not a one-person effort. It's a whole team effort, so I wanted to make sure that everyone who was a part of it was, you know, getting the same amount of celebration that I had, because um, it took so many people for me to even be sitting here right now. So um, I just wanted to make sure they got all the same credit that I was feeling that I had myself. Right, this is for Michael and Ryan, but I want to start with you, um, Michael, since you were, were in the race. You you were, you were had rattled, locked these records for a little while there, um, but also to be in you know what looks like his last race and just an emotional finish for him, what did that, what did that mean to you to be able to win that race and um, you know be in that race with him? And, and then for Ryan, if you could just add uh, you know what, what it's been like being uh, national team members with, with Ryan? Yeah, f first of all, it's, it's an honor. Um, you know, growing up, I was always watching Ryan compete, um, you know, with Phelps, and the, just the legacy that those two, and specifically Ryan, had carried. Um, this performance in the pool is amazing, and 
you know, over recent months, being a tier athlete, getting to become more personal friends with Ryan, um, especially as he's starting to phase out uh, in this like Olympic cycle, you know, it's it's an honor to share a pool with him, and to do it in his race uh, was was really special. And I think what was amazing was after the end of the race, being able to embrace with Ryan, and for him to basically tell me like like he's passing the torch to me, like he's saying like okay like you're the guy, go and do this, like, go and kick some butt, and um, that's very encouraging. As a young athlete, you know, I've always looked up to this guy, and it's just a special moment that I'll really remember forever, because it's part of history. Yeah, and I'll, I'll get to your question about uh, about Lochte, but, but first, I, I do want to hype up Annie. Uh, as she said, she, she worked at Cal in, in 2016, 2017. And, and she made a she made a big, big impact on our program. She she came down every every Wednesday. She'd have the iPad. She'd film our practice. I forgot really, about that. Really really <laughs> hard work. And, and she's she she deserves it more than anyone. She's she's an incredible person. She's gonna be a great leader for for Team USA. And then in, in terms of of Lochte, I, I love Lochte. I, I, I met him for the first time when I was when I was 12 years old because uh, I grew up in Jacksonville, Florida. He was swimming at at University of Florida, so we met at a at a local Florida Senior Championship meet, and and I was I was next to him in the prelims of the 200 back. So as a 12 year old, I'm I'm freaking out. Like he had, he was just coming off of uh, he was just coming off of I think when I was 14. He was coming off the 2008 Olympics, so he just won the 200 back in, in Beijing. And so he shows up to the prelim, he's got a bright white Speedo on, and he comes up to me before the race, he was like, all right, I'm gonna go out pretty slow, so, so you better be beating me to the 100 here. And so my, my parents were in the stands, they, they had their camera out, they're snapping pictures. He let me beat him to the 100, and then he just dusted me from there. But he, he, he's just a guy, he, deep down, he really has a good heart. And that, that's, what, that's what I really appreciate about Lochte. He, he really does care about people. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a bummer that he didn't make this team. But what an incredible guy. Uh, he, he's done so much for our sport, and, and we'll miss him on this team. Hi, uh, Zachary Draves from Nuts and Bolts Sports. And my question is from Michael. Um, to that point of Ryan acknowledging of you know passing of the torch to to guys like you and given everything that you've accomplished this week, is this week everything that you could have imagined it to be? Everything and more. Um, coming into trials, we, my dad, I say we, my dad and coach, we, we had great plans. Um, we knew what we wanted to accomplish. Obviously, this being our second trials and my first realistic shot at the team. And so you know, I feel like everything's gone very smoothly and I'm excited just with what we've been learning to take these next couple weeks to get faster. Um, and like Ryan says, we got an incredible team and I'm super stoked just to be going to Tokyo and representing the US. Hey, Aish Kumar of ESPN. Uh, congratulations, uh, when you came back in 2017, what was sort of your dream situation? And could you talk a little bit, I know you said you couldn't form in words what Lily meant to you over the past few months, but could you talk? Could you maybe try in, in your own words what all of this, like the last three years, has meant for you and like where you are today? Um, I don't think I could have ever envisioned this happening. Um, when I came back in 2017 and 2018, there were a lot of times where I questioned myself, I doubted myself. I think even when I got to Indiana um, in 2018, I don't think putting myself on the Olympic team was ever like a, a solidified goal of mine, a, solid goal, a solidified goal of my coaches. Um, I just wanted to work as hard as I could and see how good I could become. Um, you know, and I just think that hard work works and um, that's honestly how I've ended up here and I just can't really summarize it any more than that and I've just had the absolute perfect support system, teammates, um, you know, family that just has undoubtedly been there for me every step of the way. Annie, um, after the 100 breaststroke when you finished third, what did Lily say anything to you after that race to boost you up? No, and I mean, yes and no. Um, you know, that moment right after I got third, um, you know, I honestly kind of felt bad for a second because I wanted her to be able to celebrate the fact that she just made her second Olympic team um, and has been so dominant in that race over the last five years. Um, but I could tell she was very torn between wanting to celebrate and wanting to be heartbroken with me. Um, so I kind of felt bad for a little bit after that that she felt like she had to, you know, pull her heart in two different ways. 
But um, you know what? After that, um, I, her confidence never faded in me. Um, I had a great race. I just got beat by the two fastest times in the world. That's all that happened. Um, so I didn't have, I didn't lose any confidence in what I was going to do in the 200, and neither did she. And um, to have, you know, one of the most confident swimmers in the world say that to you um, is pretty incredible. Annie, what led to you stepping away from the sport a few years back? I didn't make the team in 2016, and honestly, even five years ago, professional swimming is not really what it is now. Really, the only people that went pro were people who were surely going to make major international teams or were already Olympic medalists or what have you, so I didn't really think it was my place to go professional. I had already finished my career at Auburn just a few months before that and um, was really disappointed in how the last few months of my career went and wish I could have done them differently, but um, that's just how it played out for me, and so I was just really frustrated and just thought I needed that time and didn't really ever set a time for me to come back and didn't really think I was going to come back. Do you look at the sport differently because of the break? What, what kind of perspective do you have that, that the break gave you? Yeah, um, it's a great question actually. Um, one of my coaches, you know, before we started this um, Olympic cycle, he sat me down and we were just kind of talking about our goals and what we think that I can do. Um, going into this Olympic year and you know he sat me down and said like you have the other side you've seen the other side of the sport that pretty much no one else that you're swimming against has seen before you have that card in your back pocket that no one else has you don't have this target on your back that everyone else has been swimming for years has so I think I really have that perspective of really just enjoying every moment of the sport that I have because honestly I've seen I've, I've missed it before I've been on the other side and missed it and um, I know when I'm done, I, I know I want to be done. So uh, yeah, that's kind of what I've taken from it. Annie, after what you've been through the past couple months, losing your dad, what does this moment mean in that context, having such a, such a big moment right now, after all you've been through just this year? Um, it's still kind of hard to put into words, honestly. Um, it's still like such a shock for me and my family. Um, but one thing it's taught me is that like the people that are close to me mean more to me now than ever. Um, and the people who are there for you and reach out to you, you know, in your highest of highs, but especially in your lowest of lows, words just fall short on how much it really means. Um, you know, I came here and I was really nervous to see all these people again. Um, it's my first meet since that's happened. And, um, you know, there's some people that like, you don't need to say anything to know that they're thinking about you. Like when I got here, Ryan just came up to me and just gave me a big smile and a big hug. And like, even that from someone like who probably knows, like he didn't have to say anything for me to know that he was thinking of me. And you know, other people have done the same thing, whether they've you know given their condolences or just said, I'm so happy to see you. Um, that's just meant so much to me. And um, Again, you don't ever think words are enough for you know what it means for you in a time when you know you're trying to. <sighs> the last couple of months, I've been going through trying to achieve the greatest thing that's ever happened to me while going through the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And I feel like sometimes my heart, for a, the first few weeks, it honestly felt like I was either choosing grief that day or I was choosing swimming that day. There was no in between. And. Um, yeah, but with the help of all the people who have just been checking in on me and supporting me and who have just pushed me every day and who have distracted me at practice and, you know, made meals for me and, you know, my boyfriend who just made the Olympic team and 24 hours later was on a flight home to my parents' house. Like, it's just, it's unbelievable the amount of love that you see from people who will literally drop anything for you in that time of despair. And, um, yeah, that was a long answer, but that's my answer. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, everyone.